sorry, I can't I can't stop thinking about Devon forty years ago with the six pack hog tied. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, um, I, I come up here and I do comedy a lot because I'm a really sad person and comedy draws me more than anything else. A couple, yeah. weeks, a couple weeks ago, um, I made a joke because uh, I worked for Yankee Candle for about a week, and I made a joke that after that week I was going to break off from the company and create a company called Confederate Candle. <laughs> <laughs> and the only the only scent that we were going to sell in our candles was clean cotton. <laughs> and that's a funny joke, and it's still a funny joke. What wasn't funny was the white girl that was sitting in the back, and as soon as I said the word confederate, she stands up and goes, yeah! <laughs> Y'all white people need to call the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke, John. Okay, so, that's, uh, about me. So, um, I'm, I'm not religious. I've been an atheist since the age of nine, and sometimes it feels like, um, as an atheist in a religious world, um, well, this is how it feels to me. Um, I went to a, a potluck once with some gay friends of mine, and I walked in with my broccoli strata casserole and looked over to the left and realized that we were actually having an orgy instead. Um, so I stood there. And <laughs> it's cute how y'all think it's a joke. <laughs> so I walked in, turned to the left, and saw these dicks, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And I was like, "Wait, what do I do?" Because I was actually really hungry and really just wanted to eat. My mom. <laughs> And then I was like, oh, shit, I can't even join in because I realized that the boxes that I had on had a mustard stain on them from earlier in the day when I was demolishing an entire box of frozen corn dogs Woo! and marathoning Veronica Mars. So I had to take them off because I realized that they were, they were going to make fun of me for my ugly boxers because gays wear some cute ass underwear. And I was like, well, shit. So that's what religion feels like to me. <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> but listen, there, there are some things that religious types and I do agree on. Um, Christians will talk a lot of times about how people get tested. You get tested in your daily life. And I believe that. I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard of this, where, say, like an alcoholic gets handed a drink at a party, and if they don't take the drink, they get an A on their cosmic exam for the universe. But if they do take it, they end up doing body chops off a bunch of sorority girls and then wake up the next morning face down in the backyard in Alabama. <laughs> that will get you an F on that test. <laughs> um, so, everybody gets tested, you know. You get tested, you get tested, and I get tested. And personally, I believe that my test comes in the form of middle-aged black women. <laughs> because I think they're trying to kill me. <laughs> and I'm going to give you guys some examples of this. And I'm glad Joey, at the very, at the very least, likes this joke. <laughs> so, um, as, as a college freshman, I walked into the cafeteria on Thursday. Now, for those of you who don't know, CSU has fried chicken Thursdays. Every Thursday is fried chicken. Everybody likes fried chicken. It's delicious. Um, so I walk in, and you're, you're talking to somebody who has never eaten in a cafeteria in their life. When I was in high school, I'm a frissy gay boy, so I make my own lunches and bring them from home because I'm Captain Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> so, I walk into the cafeteria, and in my world, the cafeteria is you point, you grunt, they give you whatever you want. So I walk up to the lady who's doling out fried chicken. You know, she's tall, she's black, boobs for just like centuries. <laughs> so I walk up, walk, up, walk up to this woman, and before I can open my mouth, she goes, Baby, you want a thigh and you want a breast. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just looked at her and I said, um, uh, and so she just cuts me off and she goes, baby, you look like you love some breasts. <laughs> I'm going to give you two breasts because I know you just love loving some breasts. So, like any self-respecting gay man, I turned bright red and got my chicken and ran away. <laughs> and, as, and from that perspective, <laughs> That the, the black women realized that they couldn't kill me out of sheer embarrassment. So from there, they went to psychological warfare. And they started telling me that I didn't like things that I actually do like. <laughs> and for normal people, that's fine. They'll just, I'll just be like, that's stupid. But when somebody tells me that I don't like something that I actually like, I'm like, shit, maybe they're right. Maybe, maybe my whole life is a lie. Maybe Love and Basketball isn't my favorite movie. <laughs> Okay, raise your hand if you're a white person in this room and you have seen Love and Basketball. Woo! I love you all. 
I just assume that all black people have seen it because I think it's a requirement. So, That's true. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for you guys really quickly because this is my favorite scene that makes me cry every time and I say, ah, oh, shit. <laughs>